Welcome KringleCon attendees. My name is Chris LG and I'm here to talk about the CAN bus CAN-CAN. I'm so happy to be back here in the North Pole uh, and talking to you folks today. Uh, I work for CounterHack Challenges. Uh, primarily, I build uh, challenges for NetWars and the Holiday Hack. I also do penetration testing and teach penetration testing with SANS. And on drill weekends, I have a very serious role in the Army National Guard. Before I go any farther, thank you so much, Santa Claus. Uh, it is wonderful that you keep putting this conference on. This is this is the OG virtual conference, right? We're all just so glad we can keep traveling here uh, through our browsers. I also want to thank Alan Kane and Jonathan Burnham. Uh, these two gentlemen uh, work for Toyota, securing and analyzing these, these CAN systems and making them safer for all of us. Um, when my work goes wrong, someone gets a bad pen test or, or someone's challenge breaks. When their work goes wrong, a car can go off the road. So thank you guys for having that very uh, important job and for sharing your knowledge with me about the CAN bus. So the, the CAN bus itself or controller area network is, it feels a lot like raw hardware to me because it pretty much is raw hardware, right? This is, this is something that's been around for a couple of decades now. Uh, this OBD2 port that we're gonna talk about in a minute here, that's been standard on vehicles in North America for uh, over 20 years and almost as long in Europe and different parts of the world. And it's just a very simple, basic network where one device uh, has, has information to put out, it puts it on the bus, and then if another device needs that message, it picks it up and performs some action. Uh, really not designed with any security in mind. This is just how different components of the car talk to each other. So for example, if we have our uh, little key fob here and we push lock and unlock, uh, that's gonna blast over the radio waves, the key fob receiver is gonna get it. And if it's the right code and whatnot, it'll go ahead and put some messages on the CAN bus. So uh, in our example here, let's just say that, that uh, lock and unlock codes have a CAN ID of 17 alpha. Um, any type of message is going to have a CAN ID, and that's, uh, you know, here we're gonna say the 17 alpha is is the uh, having to do with the locks, lock and lock. You might have, you know, 080, and that's got to do with brakes or acceleration or something else. Uh, so each flavor of message gets its own CAN ID, and that's that's a nice round 11-bit uh, number, because, because why not? Uh, and then following each CAN ID, you get some uh, data chunk. The size of the data chunk will vary based on the uh, the type of message it is, and, and even more based on the dialect of CAN that the manufacturer has chosen to speak in this particular vehicle. So it, it's totally different from manufacturer to manufacturer and can be even from model to model. But uh, in our example here, let's just say that locking and unlocking is CAN ID 17A and a zero is a lock and a zero one is an unlock. Uh, that's great. So that message comes out of the key fob receiver and is gonna come out across the bus and most devices aren't gonna care until it gets to something like maybe the driver door or the passenger door and they get that message and go, oh, unlock, you got it. And then the, the lock opens up. Now that OBD2 port, uh, because just one was not significant enough, we uh, we have those in our vehicles now. If you have something that's that's been built uh, in recent memory, it has, uh, let's get a little closer here. It has, ah, there we go. It has an OBD2 port uh, somewhere usually right under the, the driver's portion of the dashboard. Uh, in, in my car, it's just left of my, my knuckle here. Uh, and this is a standard connector. Even though the language spoken behind that connector on that bus uh, varies so much from vehicle to vehicle, the connector is the same. So uh, anybody, any dealer or mechanic can connect to it. And as long as the device they're connecting with speaks the right language, they can get information from the vehicle. So uh, I think the classic uh, quintessential example here is uh, my check engine light is on. Uh, I need more information than check my engine. So I bring it to the mechanic, they connect to the port, and then they get some extra data off of that bus and can be more specific. Oh, it is a solenoid or a sensor or some broken component. Uh, and then we get that extra information. Nowadays, the CAN bus is getting uh, more complex, uh, and this is this is good for a lot of reasons, right? I, I think it's probably a great idea to have the safety critical systems segmented off from the main bus, so that uh, somebody messing with my radio can't uh, immediately throw my brakes or rev the engine up. Probably a good idea, right? But we do still need information to go from one segment to another. In my car, for example, I can get gas mileage information from uh, from the screen on my radio. So that's got to be coming from you know the fuel system and the engine or something uh, from one segment to another into my into my radio, so I can see that on screen. Uh, another example of of when 
systems need to talk across these different segments would be uh, when a dealer hooks up their tool, and they look just like this, by the way, uh, kind of Christmassy, I, I appreciate that. Uh, they connect that up to the OBD2 port, and then they can push firmware. Like, let's say there's a, a recall on the steering system of your, of your vehicle, and they can fix it with a software upgrade. Great, they hook in, and then the dealer connects, uh, connects hard to this OBD2 port, and then uh, sends messages up through the gateway ECU, and maybe there's some security here, maybe there isn't, maybe it's a one byte key or an eight byte key that's static or, or who knows, but there's, there's uh, depending on the vehicle, uh, there's some method of getting through that gateway, getting into the safety critical uh, segment and getting down to uh, that steering section to, to overwrite that firmware. So good and bad, right? Like we need to have that communication, but there's also a potential for, uh, for uh, security issues. Now, uh, when it comes to looking at the traffic itself, it can be a lot, right? Like you can hook up to your car with some specialized tools and pull that traffic off and analyze it. Um, but I'm, uh, I'm a little afraid of breaking my car at some point if I mess with it too much. So uh, if you want to look at traffic uh, on its own without any risk to your vehicle, there's a great project here by uh, Zombie Craig called IC Sim. By the way, Zombie Craig, uh, when the medical community has a little bit of uh, you know free cycles for a new project, I'm pushing for you, man. Okay, Zombie Cure, Zombie Vaccine. That's next. Uh, hang in there. So, so this project lets you simulate CAN traffic. You can actually connect a joystick up to the computer and steer left and right, uh, accelerate the the, the fictional vehicle. Uh, you can hit the brakes, throw up, throw a blinker, and then see output here in a, in a virtual dashboard. Uh, so really cool. So uh, so we hook it up, we, we have it go different ways, and we see the effects of it. We also, if we're running the can dump tool, we can see raw output and save it to a PCAP and then open, open it in an analyzer like Wireshark. Neat. Now, people who are familiar with Wireshark might look at this and say, uh, there's there's some stuff missing there, man. Like usually there's extra stuff down here in the bottom and it's like, hey, this is what this traffic means. And it's kind of blank right there. And yeah, it is. Again, the the protocol specifics, the, I like to call them the dialects between the different manufacturers are different such that Wireshark can't just have a, a universal uh, translator here to, to uh, turn it all into human readable messages. So for the most part, when we are analyzing traffic on the CAN bus, it's a lot of manual effort. Um, you might get lucky and find a guide to your vehicle's specific language, and you could use that to, to see what's going on, or maybe maybe learn how to add messages to that bus to perform a specific action. But uh, more or less, we end up just having to pare down the traffic as much as we can. So we, we, we turn the never, levers and knobs as much as we can and try to figure out what's connected to what so that we can uh, pare it down to the stuff that's really uh, important. Uh, I think of, honestly, I think of uh, socks working much the same way, right? They have all this information and they've got to boil it down to the part that, that really matters. Um, so that's that's how this works. Uh, by the way, when you're running IC Sim in the, in the, the module that generates CAN traffic, there is an option to have less noise. Um, do yourself a favor, if you start playing with this and you want to figure out what commands do what, uh, what can IDs mean what, turn it on, uh, turn on the, the, the less noise option uh, and just start in easy mode, okay? So that is it there. Uh, thanks so much for listening to the talk. Uh, I'm so happy to, to have you all here and listening. I, I hope it is uh, useful to you as you hop around the castle. Um, I have a feeling that some elf somewhere here needs a hand with something related. So uh, thanks, good luck, and enjoy the con. Ho, 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 ho.